all right so i would like i would like all of you to have like all of you to just put a put a you know a welcome back message or something of a welcome message or hello message or a hi message that will show you that you are very much connected okay thank you thank you thank you there are three four people who have already five people who have already responded thank you all right so first of all i'm just talking to those who who just said that they are familiar with the roku so are have you people set up that let me just quickly share my screen and 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 best things first i just uh, shared one announcement regarding the team have you people seen that announcement yes have you people seen that announcement or uh, you have been you've been like uh, are you able to just join that team if you can just quickly do that okay so link does not work for you why it's is it not working for you let me just quickly see that oh link does not work for you as well okay all right so is that the solution someone is saying that you need to open the link open the link in a in a new okay so that will say link is fine for you so then have you have you joined the team like you have you have connected the team okay okay let me just see that you have all right so yes now you are very much connected looks like right okay so now i'm just uh, i'm just receiving those responses so if, if you can just quickly just go ahead and uh, do that and i would be expecting those also who are having problem in connecting this that they should be they should be coming here and just connecting to this okay so now i think looks like uh, most of you are joined over there. Sorry, could you repeat what we were supposed to do? I didn't catch uh, that. Uh, OK, so I have shared a, a team link with you uh, on the announcement. And I want you to just uh, go there and uh, join that team, right? And let me share my screen as well, because I have that. Let me just first quickly open that. All right, so now sharing my screen. Uh, uh, okay, someone is saying that there are some other ways as well. There's another way where you send us the code for the team or the group and we can join using that code. All right, so is is is, is that uh, like not easy uh, like you, are, are you not able to just connect this one uh, but but you are i can see you over there okay okay so we have got uh, there's no pending request right now so it looks like all of you have just joined us and i don't know if the people who were who were unable to Unable to just log in, they were, they have just, uh, they're unable to join that, maybe. Okay, so these are the five people that we have, like uh, including myself, there are six. And still from this section, I miss a few things, a uh, few one, few people, and who are those? And. Yes, looks like there are there are lots of people who are still remaining. Like again, there are four or five people who are still remaining. Can you just quickly do that as well? Anyhow, so you can just uh, later on join that or later on just send that request for that particular group. Okay, so let's start doing this. And uh, this one is as I said, this one uh, this one would be uh, would be our 
platform, our environment where we'll be just deploying our application, our Node.js application, and then we'll be working on that Node.js application. Okay, so someone is sending the request. So right, so basically what is happening is that you have to just follow these steps. And first of all, you need to just create an account with Heroku. So what I would be expecting all of you is that now I will be giving again maybe five to five to ten minutes, five minutes maybe that you will you people will be just quickly going through these steps. And if you are having any problem in these steps, you can just let me know and we can just discuss from there. So what I'm expecting all of you and for those as as people said that they are familiar, they've already worked in it. So I would just like to know from them that if they are also able to set this up project the first uh, the first step for our today's class we'll be just doing it for the for the for the for our class today and then we'll be discussing few technologies and terms that have, that we talked about and we will be just looking at those those things so what I, I what i'm what i'm expecting all of you is that you will be just doing this first so i would i would be uh, just uh, you you should just let me know that when you get a success not only by creating the heroku account and then just doing all those steps so I'm, I'm just waiting for your responses everyone and uh, then, then I will just move forward, and we'll just discuss few few important things. So I'm now expecting all of you to just work on that. All right. So as I said, I'm expecting all of you to have just a All right, so let's do this. Let, let's do a few things first. So have you people, all of you have just made that Heroku account by using your step one. So I would I would love to hear from you that how many of you are done with step one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I got a, I got a response from someone. Right, that's very good. That's good. Okay. Right. So, of course, if you have done that, then you have, uh, if you did not have already, you would be installing Node.js. Hopefully, you have done that as well. I'd be considering Node.js, Visual Studio, and this Heroku CLI. This should be taken as a step two, maybe. Node.js and VS Code. And Heroku CLI. This will be step two. I am expecting all of you to just do that because this will take a little time.
Okay, so how many of you are done with the step two? If you can just quickly respond over there. Yes, so that student, uh, uh, they have said an email to all of your friends, like all of you people, that they are unable to just join that Collaborate Ultra. So if you can just help them out, because it's it's becoming, of course, uh, annoying for them. There are two people. Uh, if, if if I talk about clearly like that, there are two people who are just having this problem, same problem. So I'm waiting for your response on step two as well. So let me just reply to that student that. All right, so I'm still expecting step two. Like, uh, looks like uh, no one is still able to do that because Heroku CLI just it, it it just takes some amount of amount of time if I remember correctly, and Node.js specifically. Hopefully, Node.js is, has not taken that much time. If you did not have it already. Step two. Let's. How many of you, if you are having any problem, you can just discuss it over here, maybe in, in team. All right, so all right, so it looks like uh, are you in the process of it? Because some people they just responded with the step one, step two is still like people are, are trying to install that, and I don't know what's, what's going on with that. Okay, can anyone if you just please tell me the, like the progress till now that what's the progress specifically right now? Maybe someone has done with load this they are right now going about okay, so Rocky you're you're, you're done with everything like the, the, this step two or maybe everything with um, okay usually I don't know but I don't know whether it's asking for you to just restart the system or not. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So, are you are you um, are you sure that the that it sets up set it set set up the path variable when while you are installing because it gives an automatic uh, like you know the option of just installing the path and giving the path. Okay, use that use the default. So Rocky, Rocky can you can just try it not a problem. You can just join join us back whenever you're ready. That's not a problem. Okay. So uh, other than Rocky, who who else is is basically at this step maybe installed everything or 
or maybe not able to or maybe just uh, just went through all these steps of, of these steps and then of course we'll be just talking about each and every line of this code of course of course that what it is doing and why we are doing this and what is this this all syntax all about and we'll be just looking at everything that what are the ports and all those things so that's that's something that we'll be just going through but right now we are we are just looking at at, uh, at setting up this environment first and then working on and then working on that right so anyone else because rocky has just already left the session as well because uh, because they have just restarted the system and All right. All right, so now we, we are moving forward and I'm expecting that you people have already done it or maybe so can can just one or two maybe just give a response. Maybe Rocky has joined us back or not after installation. So uh, anyone else can would you like to just give me a quick, quick feedback and then we have to discuss a few things. Okay, that's good. That's good. Someone has just finished installation with Heroku. Heroku CLI I'm expecting, of course and then they are just okay so you mean who has just installed okay so you are done with everything like it uh, and your your hero master is also working and push and everything is working now the same and kimberly Kim, your your as you said, same. So you mean that everything is working now. So Rocky, I'm expecting that now you're you're just logged in back, and and looks like now you'll be done with your. Okay, that's good, Kim. That's very good. So you're, it means you're ready. Everything is good, Rocky. That's very good. Okay, that's very good. You can just do that. Okay, so oh, that's very good. So we welcome, we welcome. Uh, uh, I am not seeing. Saroj is basically the, the Saroj was having a problem, and now they are just about to join. Looks like it says joining. So there are some problem. There is some problem with with their system, maybe or their network side of it i don't know but anyhow so, so we'll be joining us shortly anyhow so that's very good that people have already already done with that so today what we'll be doing is that first of all we had to just set this up we'll be working in said we'll be just discussing each and everything related to this code why what is this http port and express what is this express require what is app express everything we'll be discussing and to discuss all of all of them what we have to do is that we'll be just uh, looking at few things that we have to discuss in this week and uh, just as i said that i won't be i won't be discussing these notes all in general but again we'll be will uh, all specifically like each and every step of it but what we'll be doing is that we'll be just ha having a quick overview and we'll be I'll, I'll be just using some of the tools and letting you know that uh, you have that saroj welcome i welcome you to this session and uh, it's, it, it, it was a problem with, with something 
and now hopefully you are done with it and your your everything is working fine you can respond in chat window Saroj, if you want that now you are good to go with us with us so hope uh, like that's that's a good news for you Saroj, is that you have not missed much because we are just we are just introducing everything yes and uh, what you have to do is that just to, you you need to follow one thing Saroj, if you can see my screen this heroku guide if you do not have heroku set up already you'll be doing it later on maybe because we have just done that that part of it otherwise it was all introduction of the course so you have you have not, not missed a lot so anyhow now what we are doing is that as i said that in in the first weeks we are we are just about to discuss few things and as previously i would be looking to uh, i would be looking from, from like answers from you people some some quick responses in the chat window and that would that would give us a very good uh, feel right so we're studying a wide range of technology that create dynamic content on the web so i hope you know the dynamic content what is dynamic content a content that is like you know different for different users every user that come up with a with their own id and password and when they just log in they just see all the way a, a new environment over there so that that basically a dynamic content that you see so these include modern tools and libraries framework that enable the programmer to quickly and efficiently create a functioning web-based application so uh, as as i said and web in web 222 you were introduced to many of the technologies oh i see okay no problem no problem uh that's very good that you have uh, that you have just mentioned that so what we'll be doing is that we'll be studying a wide range of technologies for dynamic content on the web you know dynamic content when you have id and password and you just, or maybe whatever website when you just open it it shows a different content to different user on the contradiction on the contrary that that you have uh, the static websites and what are those static websites those are you 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 may call them that that showing the same contents to say um, every user if you see here that the, the contents that we are seeing looking at right now maybe that is that is coming as a as a, as a static one because if i open this website i'll see the same thing if you open this website you'll see the same thing but what about what about this one if i talk about this uh, this our blackboard or this environment i am logged in with my user id and password so i am getting all those options that are available to me because i am using my own user id and password while as if you are logged into the system you will be seeing a different set of links different set of things so uh, the same different content has been shown to different users that is specifically what I'm trying to talk about when we say dynamic content of the web. So dynamic content showing different contents to different users. Now there are different tools and libraries or frameworks which we can utilize. You know, there are there are lots of options that we have. There are libraries. There are things that we have that we can just use to make our development more efficient and more easy and more you know uh, a more uh, you, you you can call it that easy and uh, and it, it will save you a lots of lot of amount of time so all those tools and technology technologies we'll be discussing in web 222 what you were doing that you were working on the client side of it mostly you have worked on the client side technologies and as i said in the beginning in 322 we'll be talking about the servers we'll be just talking about how we can manage the servers and how we can just run our own servers by using the technologies like node.js and like that so we'll be looking at exactly what a web application is and how we can familiar programming language so this is important and this is something that i want to discuss javascript or ecmascript we'll start you are familiar with javascript so we'll see that how javascript and ecmascripts are used to create and maintain these servers now as i said the the difference between the last course and this one is that now you'll be working on servers rather than the client okay so and 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 one more uh, like highlight from this one is that we are st storing and retrieving data from sql and nosql databases as i as someone said they have worked a bit in in mongodb and they have worked a bit in uh, databases relational databases so this course specifically will give you a good introduction of how you can just uh, just pull out data from a website how you can just store data from a website how you can do those CRUD operations that you usually do with your with your other applications and you you want to do those CRUD operations in your web applications so we'll be we'll be working on a website that would have the database part of it maybe it's sql or no sql i hope you know the difference between sql and no sql if not we will be discussing that 
But again, so we'll be talking about the databases. We'll be talking about the power of JavaScript ECMAScript and trying to create uh, a fully functional, a robust app, web application by using following. Now, so database environment, Visual Studio. So first of all, the first tool that you already have, we are using is Visual Studio Code. So can anyone quickly give me a one-liner that what is the difference between the Visual Studio, the, the main giant Visual Studio, and then our Visual Studio Code? A very specific, a very uh, a very quick difference between these two, the the Visual Studio and the Visual Studio Code. If you talk about that, we have these two uh, these two terms or these two uh, softwares that we use. Okay, so as Rocky said, that that's very good. Thank you very much. So it's a lightweight development area where you are, you know, uh, by lightweight, you can even say that Visual Studio Code can be considered sometimes as you will you'll see and we'll see the example that you can count it as a as a web browser as well. So that will give us a very good sense of a very lightweight environment because for that that Visual Studio as we are talking about the big giant Visual Studio that we talk about you need to have so many so many dependencies dependencies so many you know the the requirements are that Studio Code a very quick jump start you just take Visual Studio Code and you just start coding and as I said it 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 it, it acts like a, a web browser some in some environment. Anyhow, so it's open source free streamline and it's an easy one and it has an integrated terminal that that gives us a very good uh, you know uh, environment where we can use CLI to work on that and we'll be working that CLI most often in this course because we'll be setting up servers we'll be setting up all those things by using the integrated terminal that we have. All right, so it's had is smart editing intelligence. I hope you know what is intelligence that it will be just giving us that all those you know uh, the the uh, the code um, hints at what you want to write what you have to just you use so and also it is a file file and uh, file folder that's that's another very important concept of it that it, it will provide us the file and uh, file environment and the folder environment because that would be so you, you see there is something important on this vs code can read and take advantage of variety of project files defined by different frameworks and platforms for example if the folder opened in vs code contains one or more package.json, which will be making more making extensive use. Yes, so package.json is something that will be just working on a lot on that. So project.json, tsconfig.json, or .NET Core Visual Studio solution project file, VS Code will read all these files and use them to provide additional functionality such as rich intel. So uh, it on one side it's lightweight, on the other side it's it will provide us all those all those heavy uh, you know backup supports of those all those things okay version control this is something very uh, special and these days it has to be it has to be a very you know a, a very common common thing that you need to always use a version control of your soft, of your systems of your softwares it has integrated git support so so it would be integrated like a git support so you don't need to have uh, separately work on that and we, as you said that as you as you have just set up this uh, you know uh, visual studio code and you have set up your first node just product you have can very easily just you know uh, uh, like you know use this git and version version controlling and you can just you can just commit your changes and we'll talk about all those things if you are not familiar so anyone a quick quick question uh, have you people be like uh, are you people familiar with this git environment version control environment before uh, like in chat window i'll be just uh, i'll be just looking for answers that have you have you worked on this before? Lit GitHub and everything. Yeah. Anyone? Okay. Saroj has worked in that. That's very good. And anyone? Anyone else? Maybe. Maybe one or two more responses, and then I'll, then we'll just move forward a little bit. Okay. Okay, so Rocky, you've worked in that, but you have not, like it has not been discussed officially, like, you know, you, you you mean that it has not been discussed at the part of the course. So, okay, we'll we'll just try to, okay. So we'll just try to, uh, try to just cover most of these important concepts, but again, we cannot go into the deeper detail of everything, but yes, we'll be just talking about that much that is required for our particular purpose. So we'll be introduced to that. Uh, just for a, just for a quick uh, a preview for it, it's an extremely popular version control system used for both commercial and open source projects around the world and having integrated access to commands within the ID is valuable feature. So again, we have this uh, version controlling already uh, done in our 
excuse me, uh, in our Visual Studio environment. Okay, so then we have our good, good old friends, Chrome and Firefox. And if you are again, if you're working on a Mac, you have you have all other options as a Safari and all those things as well. So what I would recommend you is that you have you must have these uh, at least at least minimum these two web browsers. But again, if you are working on your Mac and and also there you have uh, or maybe you can work on Safari or some other support. Web browsers. A quick question, and then we'll move forward. When web browsers were born, like what is the uh, birth year of web browsers? Quick answers, and we'll just we'll just move on move on forward. Anyone? The birth of web browsers when they were born. A rough idea. Ah, like I'm talking about these these modern web browsers that. But again, there were a few shapes of web browsers before. But again, that 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 usually is not counted as to. So anyone maybe. The birth of web browser, the any birth year of web browser, if anyone knows. So, um, anyhow, if Internet Explorer was the first or not, it's it's a, it's not the discussion right now. What we are discussing is when it was born. Okay, anyhow, we'll discuss what is that, what was the first one, but what is uh, what is the probably the 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 rough year or rough uh, like time of year when, when the web browser first web browser was born. Okay, so Nikita, you are very near. It was you know, early 90s, 91, 92, somewhere around that. When HTML was created, HTML was developed. And you, you probably know that who developed HTML in your Web 2.2.2 course. You know, if you have, if you go your first notes one slide, you'll find that person. Anyone would like to name that before, go, without going into that slide, that who is the inventor of HTML, who, who, who invented HTML? And again, by the time HTML was invented or developed, like you know, it, it 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 was developed. It was it was the time when when web browsers were got also you know the birth. So, so remember, no, no problem. It was Tim Berners Lee. If you remember, Tim Berners Lee was the uh, inventor or developer of HTML. Google says something. <laughs> yes, okay. So Tim Berners Lee, Sarod, you were a bit slow. So I won't. Anyhow, so <clears throat> before starting the course, you should at least basic understanding develop. Okay, so we have these these developer tools. I hope you have used those developer tools before as well. We will see some very important aspects of these developer tools in our web browsers. And these these developer tools they they make your life very easy. And in development also, you have got all those help available to you, and you can just go and work on those. Uh, those those environments and those things and you will be you'll be going uh, you, you you will be you know just testing your lots of things by using these developer tools so uh, i hope you are familiar with it somewhat but again we'll be looking a very uh, deep down deep introduction so as you as you see here we'll be just quickly looking at this we'll be working with many of these panels through the semester as i said a quick list of their functionality from left to right starting top corners of so you can just quickly go through all these but i will just look at few of them Element inspector. It it it's an element in page to inspect. This will cause the developer tools to switch to elements panel in the highlight the rendered source HTML responsible for this. So elements inspector is basically what whenever whatever you have selected, it will just try to give that particular thing in 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 that element. So um, 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 another a, a, a quick question: What are elements? If anyone can just quickly uh, let me know what are elements. What is specifically do we call as element? Anyone? What is an element? If 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 someone can just give me a definition, you know we know we know what are tags. The tags are what? That basically we have uh, uh, div and table. So what you're saying? Anyone agrees or disagrees with the, with any tags on page? Okay. Anyone else? What is an element? But so so what between the tag and an element? That 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 will just you know uh, create a. I see a, a, a bit of controversy. Anyhow, so an element specifically refers us again, as you said, tag, the combination of the starting tag, ending tag, and plus the contents. Yes, that can be selected and modified with element selector. You're right. So we say that an element specifically is a combination of these two, uh, these three things. Specifically, you can tell, you can you can say it. The first is starting tag, the the markup starting, 
the ending tag and and the combination about this so again when we body body means that we are talking about one element because body is uh, has has a starting tag has an ending tag like a pair tag and then they have they have everything in between them so the device tool toggle and uh, toolbar toggle elements panel we have we have console panel very important one and we'll be using this this also very much and i'll talk about that it's a javascript console pane that allows that that uh, console.log will show the result text in window additionally all javascript errors will show up in this location in red so that's that's a good help and it will it will just you know that console will be giving us what the 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 all the all the problems in that javascript so again we have we'll be just covering or we'll be just using this console panel every now and then to check our javascript code and javascript problems within that so source sources panels are there network panel it's another very important one and it it gives you the status codes that is specifically right and you know that these specific codes and those codes they are very important in in working in working on a web application then you you need to know that what type of response is coming from what type of response you are applying to so that that also gives you a very very good sense of it so as i said that we'll be using uh, we'll be using some of them very much and some of them we might not be using as that one but anyhow all right so um, maybe this would be, this would be the last uh, last session for today but uh, we'll be just covering all those rest in, in in our next coming class so javascript es5 and es6 right so now what we are doing is that this this javascript or es5 and es6 will be using and this es5 and es6 is what ecma script and what is the ecma european computer manufacturers association a, a, a quick question over here if you remember if without googling if you can just find out what was this s key of course you, you must know that because we this is the very first acronym that we study when we start studying computer science i generally feel that you you always study this one first anyone without google can can just provide me the answer that what is what is this ascii code what how do we use that yes anyone okay so it was american standard code for information interchange if you remember it was it was the mapping of the keys it is the mapping of the keys with the with our uh, with our system anyhow so ecmai script is basically um uh, java scripts specification was taken to ecma so european computer manufacturer association and they developed standardization because you know javascript in the very beginning early days everyone having their own definitions of javascript own definition old you know the support of javascript but then they they started feeling that now we need to standardize this javascript but again we are talking about those good those good old days where we are we were we were just uh, we were just uh, using this javascript to the to the client side of it as you have used in your previous course so but again what did what they did did was it developed a formal standard specification which other browser vendors and companies could implement and expand the standard javascript was dubbed as ecmascript so again i hope that that you know that and you have heard this ecmascript or its, its syntax so it's basically all right so nasim is saying that voice quality is low is that with everyone please let me know because you know this will be recorded and and uh, if the voice quality is not good it's always it always creates problem uh sa it's not good uh sa you mean it's not good that uh, the the voice quality is not good for you as well because your yes is not uh, not all right all right okay you have a little hard to uh, maybe is that is that something wrong with my with my mic is it is it is it something better can now like it's maybe if at times it's to doing problems or uh oh oh yes
So that's a uh, uh, that's something that we are we are talking. So okay, so it has a bit more echo in it. So that, does that echo like is that echo annoying, uh, Alex? Maybe it's it, if it is not that annoying, like it's 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 something that is bearable, or maybe. Okay, okay, right. So I'll just try to fix that as well. Maybe I'll have to change a headphone or or something. Anyhow, right. So now we are talking about that JavaScript was dubbed like the standard standardized JavaScript was dubbed as an ECMAScript. So ECMAScript is the standard version, and you know. Uh, in ECMAScript, what, what happened in 2015, ECMAScript 6 was released, ES, ES6, and many interesting new features were introduced. And we will be discussing these features in very much detail. The arrow functions, the class definitions, the block to scope variables, promises. Promises is, is, is considered as an, another very interesting thing. Binary and octoliterals were introduced, the modules were, and many, many more. So ES6 is providing you know more and more life to JavaScript, and it, it has it has been it has been provided. It has been given a lots of things that that JavaScript was traditionally missing. Okay, one thing that I, that I wanted to discuss over here, which I just missed out, is that JavaScript engines. So you see here, this is something very important because we have to work on that. So for example, the, uh, we, we were, when we are talking about this ECMAScript. This includes JavaScript engines like SpiderMonkey in Firefox. There is a JavaScript engine that works for JavaScript. There's V8, all popular V8 in Chrome, if you have heard about it. And then Chakra in Internet Explorer. So these are basically the JavaScript engine that will be running or that will be just taking our code and, and making it uh, like executable in one way or other. So the, these are the JavaScript engines being used specifically inside the inside the uh, inside of our browsers so that is that is something that you need to just keep in mind that we have got this uh, like you know um, all these these technologies uh, like these engines with us spider monkey for firefox and v8 in we usually lot more work on that v8 uh, of course prevailing or most widely used is chrome if you if you go to internet you've tried to find out that there are lots of uh, like web browsers and chrome is is one of the very popular so these are all the technologies that we'll be using and uh, this ECMA 6, yes, 6, um, um, this, this will provide us a very important features. But uh, but having said that, they are not fully implemented in all browsers or all runtimes or all JavaScript engines. So, um, but again, the, the thing that we'll be using, server-side runtime that will be working in Node.js supports 97% of the specification and is considered production ready. So again, this is something that we have that this is production ready like Node.js that we'll be using. So uh, today, uh, specifically, we have not talked about anything, uh, you know, in, in general. Uh, so from next class, I will have some few tools and all those these tools, and we'll be just working on these tools, and we'll just trying to uh, find out. And I'll just start from this point where we are leaving here, that Node.js, we'll be introducing this Node.js, and uh, this Node.js will be, uh, will be uh, introduced, and then jQuery, and then Postgres, and then we'll be talking about these codes. I would be expecting you, all of you, to just have, have gone through these uh, these uh, these uh, nodes so that we we can just have better interaction and we can have better you know uh, better responses from you and once i will be getting good responses from you we'll be just going a bit more uh, faster so uh, till now any question as we have as i said that we have not discussed anything of very potential but again one thing that you have now set up the node environment and we can work on that environment for the for the next week part but for this week we'll be just discussing these all those methods and all those so any question till now? Anyone? Or we are good to go because we are about the, the time is about to get over. So any questions? Or I should stop recording now. And if you have any questions, you can just quickly uh, let me know. Okay, I think that's very